We're going back this morning. Amen. We're going to get started in Judges. Go back with me to Judges. We're going to go a little old school this morning. Judges chapter 6. We're going to talk about Gideon this morning. Amen. In chapter 6, it starts off talking about the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. Amen. And in doing evil, the Midianites, the Amorites, the Amalekites, and the Hittites, and the Hutites, and the Wattites, and 16 other other types. Amen. There was all kinds of ites that got involved. Amen. You see, when you, when, now listen to me, church. When you pull yourself out from eat underneath the umbrella of God's favor and protection, there are natural consequences that come with your choice. A lot of people will say things to me like, Pastor, why is God doing this to me? And you got the wrong question. You see, it's not God doing it to you. It's you doing it to yourself. Amen. You see, when we're obedient and we follow what the words, come on now. You see, the word is specific on what we're supposed to do. Amen. But what happens is we're too lazy. Oh, pastor, you done got to meddling already this morning. You see, we're too lazy to figure out what the word says for ourselves, And so we just accept what somebody else standing up here says. Well, listen, there are a lot of pastors in this nation who are called and anointed to preach. Amen. They're doing it for God and for his kingdom. But there are a few of them out there. Amen. That are up here for prestige, for prosperity, and for some other things. Amen. Now, that's between them and the Lord. Amen. We don't bash pastors in this church. The Bible says, touch not my anointed ones. Amen. And so that's between them and the Lord. Amen. But see, as for me and my house, amen, me and, and this is my house in Jesus' name. See, it's his house ordained through me, amen. It's our house. See, my house is a relative term to the person speaking. You get that? It's not my house when I say my house meaning my house. It's my house when I say my house meaning you say the same thing. This is my house. You know what? I find great pleasure when I hear you guys talking about my church. My church. Because, see, you take ownership and possession. And that's what God's looking for. He's looking for a people who are willing to take ownership and possession of what the word says. Amen. Now, listen to me. The Bible says, we're going to start in verse 7. It came to pass when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord because of the Midianites that the Lord sent a prophet to the children of Israel who said to them, Thus says the Lord of God of Israel, I brought you out from Egypt. I brought you out of the house of bondage and come on now. I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and all the who oppressed you. You see, my Bible says if my people will humble themselves and pray. Well, you see, you, you want to know how to make a difference in this nation? Start doing some praying. Amen. Start doing some praying and then start living your. Come on now. Start living your life. Like the word says, you see, the word says that they were oppressed and the Lord heard their prayers and they sent a prophet. Amen. Amen. You, you see, the church today should be the answer that people are looking for. Right. You see, the church today ought to be filled with people looking for the answers this morning. Amen. You, you, I can't believe in all honesty. When, when we need church the most, we seek it the least. You, you, you know, when you're, when you're hurting and you're struggling and, you, and you're not understanding, you'll, you'll choose to stay home instead of come to church. Where church is where the answer is. You, you know why you choose to stay home? Because home, there's no buffet. Home, there's no Holy Spirit prodding you. Right. you. You see, some of you guys will come to me sometimes and you'll say, Pastor, have you been over peeking in my window? I ain't no peeping Tom. <laughs> say, have you been listening to my conversation? Because you were preaching this morning and it just hit me right where, you understand what I'm saying? See, that's not the pastor. You got to understand that's the Holy Spirit. You see, that's the Holy Spirit. What the Holy Spirit is trying to do is get you to wake up. 
Make change and get better. Amen. Amen. To get better. See, the children of Israel found themselves in a place they needed to change. The United States of America has found itself in a place that needs to change. You see, this was one nation under God, indivisible. We are now one nation. God's kind of off to the side and we totally divisible. We've never been more divided than any time in the, in the history of our nation right now. And where's the church? Where's the church? Where's the voice of truth? The voice of reason? Amen. When you watch the news, they, they say the most illogical, irresponsible things. They promote an agenda that the church shouldn't be a part of. Amen. You see, the Bible says that we're called according to his purpose for his good grace to further his kingdom. And Jesus taught that you'll know my people by their love. Amen. But see, listen, we can love people and not agree with them. Amen. We can love people and stand up for what we believe in. We can love people and still say that Jesus loves you. You see, the problem is a teaching that's not taught in the church. You see, people say things, well, if he's a loving God, why is this and this and this? Well, if you understood Bible theologic theology, I'll get it out. Even that word's hard to say, amen? If you understand theology, you understand it's not God doing it. You see, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And we become swooed and swayed by the media and by things that we hear and, and understand because we don't have an understanding of what the Word says. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. Every bad thing comes from the devil. It's really that simple. But we make it a little more complicated. And we try to bring into it reason and emotion when reason and emotion don't work. Amen? All right. See, it says here, now we're going to skip down to verse 11. Now the angel of the Lord came and said under the terebinth tree, which was in Oprah, which belonged to Joaz, the Alberite, whose son Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. <clears throat> we, we touched on it a little bit when we started. You see, they're under bondage now. And what's happening as the, the harvest comes in, all of these different groups of people, they come in and they steal the harvest. And what happens is they come, they only just steal the harvest. They take the cows and the oxen and the sheep, amen. And they take everything from them and they're leaving the children of Israel in a destitute place and being in, you understand? And so all of this is going on. You see, they found themselves in a dry, desolate place. Hmm. Church. We need to get out of the dry, desolate place. Amen. You see, the spirit moving in Sunday services ought to be the norm. Amen. People being healed ought to be the norm. Yes. Worshiping the Lord ought to be the norm. You see, it, it shouldn't happen one Sunday a month or one Sunday every other month. It ought to happen every Sunday, all the time. Right. Yeah. You see, people should be attracted to church. Come on now. Yes. But what happened? You see, we became complacent. We became complacent because we had it so good for so long. Amen? Amen. But see, there's change coming. There's change coming. And so with change coming, church, we need to be strong at who we are in the Lord. We need to be strong with what we believe in the Lord. You see, if you're not rooted and grounded in what you believe, you're easily dissuaded from the truth. Amen? And so you need to be 100% sure of what you believe, why you believe it, and why it's the truth. So that the Holy Spirit within you will always recognize a lie. Amen. 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 Will always recognize a lie. You, you know, when somebody's trying to teach or tell you something, 
And all of a sudden in your spirit, you start getting this uneasy feeling in your spirit. That's the Holy Spirit, okay? Now the Holy Spirit is doing one of two things. Either they're trying to get your attention because maybe you need to make some change, amen? Or they're trying to get your attention because somebody is selling you a whole load of hoo-hoo. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit, listen to me, church. The Holy Spirit is your teacher, Amen. not the pastor, Amen. not the pastor. Amen. The pastor breaks and shares the word under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit convicts, teaches and trains. Amen. 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 And so it's the Holy Spirit that's speaking to you. And when somebody's trying to teach you something contrary to the word, thy word have I hid in my heart. Amen. Have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. See, if you have enough of the word pushed down inside of you, amen, enough of the word. You know, Jesus said that if you'll study the word, this is loosely paraphrased. If you'll study the word, you don't have to really memorize all of the word because when you need the word, I will bring back to your remembrance the word that you need at the time that you need it. And so when somebody's trying to tell you something that goes contrary to the word, the word inside you starts saying, ah, 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 ah. No, 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 no. Amen. And then the Holy Spirit with wisdom will give you instruction on whether to rebuke, whether to run away. Or whether to sit there and smile real pretty like <laughs> until they finally just, you know, shut up and go away. Because, listen, the Bible says don't cast your pearls before swine. And there's some swine out there who are going to try to talk your ear off. And no amount of talking is going to change and you're going to make a bad situation worse sometimes. So the Holy Spirit will lead and guide and direct if you stay tuned to what he's saying. Amen. 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 This is good this morning. It says right here that in order to hide from the Midianites and the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Did you just read that? In your, did you read that same thing? Isn't it a little ironic? That... He, 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 the Lord just called him a mighty man of valor. Right now what the Lord, is that what it says in your, Emily, does that say that in your Bible? Does it? Is it coffee good? It's nice, huh? No, I'm good right now, but thanks. But see, he said, you mighty man of valor. Was he not looking at the circumstance that he found Gideon in? Because it could just be me. But when I'm looking and reading it, Gideon was hiding in the wine press. Okay, come on now. He's hiding in the wine press and he's crushing wheat, crushing grain, and he's doing it hiding in secret so he can keep it. Now, let me ask you, where's the valor in that? Because I'm thinking you mighty man of valor. He should have been out in town square in front of God and everybody doing his thing with the wheat and telling everybody, you want some of this? Yeah. Right? That's what we think, mighty man of valor, right? Amen. You want some of this? When, when my, my kids were little, we were up in uh, Washington visiting family, and Cheyenne was about five years old, and my nephews decided they wanted to have a snowball fight. And so I was holding Cheyenne's hand and we walked outside and they were trying to get me. Isn't that funny how once in a while guilty by association will get you in all kinds of trouble? There's a lesson in that, but we ain't going to preach on that today. But they were throwing snowballs, but they hit Cheyenne right in the face. You know, and, and at first I got to admit, I got a little riled up at first. You know, you hit my daughter in the face with a snowball. I'm going to run you over with a truck. Come on now. But she, uh, my daughter, this is, this is my daughter, okay? This is my daughter. She wiped off that snow like this. 
She looked at him and said, you want a piece of me? <laughs> you want a piece of me? You see, that's my idea of a mighty man of valor. You see, a mighty man says, you want a piece of me? He's not hiding in the wine press. But listen, this is what you got to understand. With Jesus, with Jesus, Gideon becomes a mighty man of valor. You see, Jesus is looking at you today. And he's telling you, you are a mighty man of valor. You are a mighty man of valor. You see, man's a generic term that encompasses men and women. Amen. So the you are a mighty man of valor applies to each and every one of us. Because the Holy Spirit within you makes you a mighty man of valor. You see, God doesn't look at the circumstance he finds you in. He sees the circumstance he wants to bring you to. And in bringing you to, he creates in you the mighty man of valor. You see, when you got saved and you asked Jesus into your heart, amen. And now listen, my Bible says there's only one way into heaven. One way. It says if you call on the name of Jesus, if you ask him to forgive you of your sins, that he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins, to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, amen. The Bible says when you ask Jesus into your heart that you're saved. It doesn't say being good makes you saved. It doesn't say believing in God makes you saved. So when somebody says there's multiple ways to get to heaven, that's a lie. That is not scripturally sound. The Bible says one way. One way. And if you love someone and you really love them, you'll tell them there's only one way. Because if they're trying to make it another way, they're not going to make it. Because, listen, either you believe all of the word or none of the word. Either it's all true or it's none true. Amen. You don't get to pick. It's just like the laws of the land. We don't get to pick. Contrary to sanctuary city mentality. We don't get to pick. The law is the law. Amen. Amen. Now listen, I don't agree with a 55 speed limit law. I don't agree with that. I think whatever speed you can keep it on the road, that's the one you should drive. (laughs) But the police don't see it my way. You see, you have to obey the laws. Amen. It's the same with the word. We have to obey the law. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Now, listen, I'm going to I'm going to describe you to you right here in Gideon. He says, Gideon said to him, oh, my Lord, if it's the Lord with us, then why has all this happened? That's what he said. You know, the angel just called him a mighty man of valor. And now he's fixing to whine like a sissy. The angel says, Gideon, you mighty man of valor. He's like, oh, yeah, my sister, my man, your sister, why has this all happened to me? Well, where were you when the Anionites came? Well, where were you when the Amagites came? Well, where were you when the Amagites? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a mighty man of valor to you? But that's you. Man, that is you to a T. As soon as you don't understand what's going on. We don't go back and say, God, I just love you. We don't go back and stand on what the promises in the word say. We don't go back and and review the scripture that applies to what we're going through. We automatically jump to, well, if that's God, where's God now? Right? Come on now. Just being honest this morning, 
But see, listen, when you get enough of the word, when you, let me say that again. When you get enough of the word in you, the circumstance doesn't sway you from the truth. Amen. Amen. People say, well, pastor, why does bad things happen to good people? Because Satan is the ruler of this earth. Amen. And because Jesus was crucified and he said, listen, they're going to persecute you like they persecuted me. They're going to make fun of you like they made fun of me. There, you understand what I'm saying? So why do we get so dumbfounded, surprised, and amazed when sinners act like sinners? You see, what amazes me is when Christians act like sinners. Amen? Let's act Christ-like. Let the sinner sin. That's what they do. And let's pray for them. Amen? Let's pray for them. You see... When the angel appeared to Gideon, come on now, the Lord already knew where Gideon was going. He already knew the plans that he had for Gideon. God already knows the plans that he has for you. He already knows what he's called you to do. He already knows the lives that you're going to affect. He already knows the purpose that he has for you in the kingdom. But see, what he's waiting for you is to stop looking in the mirror and seeing you and start looking in the mirror and seeing him. The reflection that you see in the mirror will dictate how far you'll go in your calling and in this world. Amen. You see, the more of Jesus that you see looking back at you in the mirror the better off your life will be. The more of Jesus you see looking back at you in the mirror, the further you'll go in furthering his kingdom. The more of Jesus that you see look at is the more peace that you'll live in. But see, every time when you go to look in the mirror, if you see the Gideon that's hiding in the wine press, you see, you see the you with all of your challenges, problems, and faults. And instead of seeing Gideon, the mighty man of valor, Gideon, the mighty man of valor. You see, you need to replace Gideon with your name. You see, the angel says to me, Kenny, you mighty man of valor. Amen? You see, that's what he's saying to you this morning. In the midst of the struggle that you're going through, the Holy Spirit is calling you a mighty man of valor. In the midst of the turmoil that we're facing in our nation today, the Holy Spirit is calling you the mighty man of valor. In the, you see what I'm saying? So in all that you do, in all that we see, in all that we hear, our focus needs to be on Jesus. On Jesus. You see, just like the angel came and called Gideon a mighty man of valor, in the midst of what was not anywhere near valor. That's the same Holy Spirit now under the new covenant that resides inside you. Amen? You see, that spirit inside you, that new mighty man of valor inside you, now listen to me, has the power to break every chain that comes against you. To break, now listen to me, that Holy Spirit breaks addiction. That Holy Spirit breaks down barriers. That Listen, that spirit within you breaks down strongholds. That spirit, see the Bible says that mighty is our weapons. You see, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty in the Lord and in the Spirit. And when you get on the same page as Jesus, when he calls you to be a mighty man of valor, that mighty man of valor can break through racism. That mighty man of valor breaks through poverty. That mighty man of valor breaks through addiction. That mighty man of valor breaks through depression. That mighty man of valor breaks through life's cares, challenges, and pr- You understand what I'm saying? There is no chain, no bond that stands against you and Jesus. 
But see, it's the mighty man inside you that you have to bring out. By not standing, listen, by not standing on your will, by not standing on your reason, knowledge, or intellect, but by standing on the Word of God. By standing and believing the Bible in its entirety on what it says. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. God's a good God. He's called you to do great things. You see, people always say, well, what can I do? You can serve the Lord. What can I do? You can honor the Lord. What can I do? You can influence the people around you to serve the Lord. What, you see what I'm saying? The question is not what can I do, it's what should I do. Amen. Every one of you has a sphere of influence that you're involved with. And your sphere of influence, listen, they ought to be better off because they know you. All of your friends ought to be better off because they know you. Because it's not you, it's the Jesus in you. It's the Holy Spirit in you that ought to break bread and commune with the Spirit in them. And in that, it ought to bring a peace and a harmony. Amen. It ought to, it ought to start in your home and move out to your friends and move out to where you work. And you see what I'm saying? Amen. You see... We keep looking for somebody to make the change when the somebody to make the change is you. You are the reason. You are the change. You are the one that God's calling today. You are the one that he's saying, you mighty man of valor. It's time to rise up. It's time to rise up. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Amen.